Hello to the beautiful family of Patria, and I hope that you are well. As you guys can see, we are focusing on youth. We want to make sure that as a congregation, we never forget that if the next generation does not want to be Christians, we miss the plot. And so therefore, we want to invest into not only our youth, but also our children into the next generation. And we ask that you will pray with us for them. We're spending time and gathering the youth parents so that we can share stories and speak about what is happening in schools and what is happening on social media and what are the troubles and the problems that we are facing together. So we are gathering together as church. We want to make sure that we understand the time and the era well so that we do not neglect our children, that we don't assume that the world will train them and that the world will grow them. It is our responsibility, church. And so therefore, youth, we just want to say that we love you, we care for you, and we are very excited to journey with you. Before we continue with the sermon, I want to speak about a beautiful um, word, and the word is rest. So before we enter the sermon, I want to quickly just park on this word. Rest is something that a lot of people are working towards or hoping towards or living towards. If you live towards hope in the next weekend, if you live towards rest in the next holiday, it means that you are not in a state of rest. And as Christians, we are supposed to be in a constant state of rest. And that's what the sermon's going to be about. The sermon's going to speak about the reason why we can be in a constant state of rest. And so therefore, I hope that you are looking forward to the sermon. But before we get into the sermon, let's pray together and then just listen to a beautiful song that sets our hearts so that we can prepare our hearts for the Word of God as we continue in our study on who Jesus is, who the Holy Spirit is, and how we as Christians are supposed to live as church. Our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you so much just for your beauty, Lord. We thank you for the fact that you are a good Father. Lord, we pray into every heart listening to the sermon, and we ask, Holy Spirit, that you will guide us in the smallest of small details. Amen. Let's enjoy a beautiful song. Closer than the air that we breathe, deeper than the oceans beneath, matchless in all. Spirit, 
song closer than the air that I breathe every time that I listen to that song every time I read those words I think about it because when you think about how close air really is it fills your lungs it fills the inside of you and Jesus is closer than that he's closer than the air that we breathe now I want to speak about something that we've spoken on many times and you will see with all of the topics that we are preaching on lately, we are reusing topics that we have discussed, especially last year as we went through COVID. But I've preached on this topic many times and we should as church revisit topics like these regularly. I want to speak about the following topic. It is finished. What does this mean? I know that most of you understand and know that when these words were spoken, they were spoken by our Lord Jesus Christ. Most of you will know that it was spoken by Jesus as he hung on the cross. But some of you might not be aware of that. Maybe you are young as a Christian and, and you don't know these words yet and you don't understand what they mean. I want to speak about those words quickly before we go through certain scriptures that I want to use to, to empower, to help us as church understand the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that was given because of these words. And the Holy Spirit is the one that empowers us as church to do the good work. And so therefore, as we as church live in this, in this day and age, I want to make sure that we revisit these words and make sure that we as church understand and remember. So remind ourselves of the words Jesus spoke. So I'm going to go into the statement that I want to bring to your attention. The words it is finished equals the beginning of the church. And so what does that mean? What does the beginning of the church mean? See, prior to these words, we had the nation of Israel. We never spoke about church. We spoke about people going to the synagogue, the nation of God, Israel, going to the synagogue. And so after this, after this event where Jesus gave his life, he went down to hell. He was raised from the dead. He conquered death. He 
went back to heaven from where he rules over everything in heaven and on earth and below the earth. So he rules over everything. He has all authority. And today he lives out his life through the body of Jesus being the church. Everyone who accepted Jesus Christ becomes a temple. Everyone who believes in what Jesus Christ has done believes that they form part of what we know as church. In the beginning it was called the way, but it's now called the church. It's the vehicle through which Jesus to this day does. And so therefore the number one thing that Satan will do is hit at church, hit at individuals, hit at our identity, make us angry at one another, make us gossip and strife. The way that Satan would come at us is nullify the next generation, for instance, by us being so occupied with our own lives that we forget that Christianity is all about the next generation. See, Christianity is only Christianity today because someone prior to us did it right. They lived in accordance to what Christ did. And because of that, Christ is to this day still extending and building His church. But we have to believe in the fullness of what church is. I want to read you these beautiful words. In John, it's captured in the book of John and only in John as the Gospels. So John 19 verse 30 says, When Jesus had tasted it, He said, It is finished. Then He bowed His head and gave up His spirit. Now, this was Jesus hanging on the cross and he said that he is thirsty and they had wine, which was basically vinegar. And they dipped it into the vinegar and they gave it to him on a spear to suck on. And after he sucked on it, which was a fulfillment of a prophecy, he said, it is finished. You see, that's the beauty of this prophecy. It was a fulfilled prophecy and it was one of the last things that Jesus had to do. So he fulfilled another, yet another prophecy by doing exactly that. And then he breathed out his last breath, bowed his head, and he gave up his spirit. As we read it in the other Gospels, we see that Jesus shouted out, Eli, Eli, lama shabachthani, my Lord, my Lord, oh my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I cannot imagine what he had to go through being God, carrying the full weight of every person's sin on him. Now, church, we can look at what Jesus did and praise his name for the fact that he won the victory. But we as church must remind ourselves that it is finished was the start of who we are supposed to be, which is the continuation of the life of Jesus Christ, so that we may grow more and more into the likeness of Jesus. That's who we're supposed to be. So if I read a few scriptures to you, we're going to go through the book of Philippians, um, not the full book. I want to just read two small passages from Philippians. Philippians 1 verse 6 says, And I'm certain that God who began the good work within you will continue His work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. Now, I want you to consider what this says. Jesus is coming back again. We're not 100% sure when. There's a lot of signs indicating that we might be close to the end time, but we're not going to go into end time prophecy now. I want to speak about let him choose when he comes back. There's one thing we know, that darkness will grow darker and the light will grow lighter. The shakable will be shaken, but the unshakable will stand. So that's our responsibility, church. We are standing on the unshakable ground. And so therefore, when I look at this, it says, And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. So when you read this, it says that he is busy with a work within you. My question is this, do you recognize that work? Are you still enough? Do you have enough rest? Are you allowing him? Are you considering it? 
that God is working on you? Or are you just living life? See, we must read the Word of God and apply the Word of God so that we will realize what God is busy with in and through us. If not, we are naive. And if we are naive, we're naive about the spiritual as well, and therefore the demonic deception as well. I want to continue with Philippians 1 verse 9 to 11. Let's read this. I pray that your love will overflow more and more and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. For I want you to understand what really matters so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. May you always be filled with the fruit of salvation. The righteous character produced in your life. By who? By Jesus Christ. For this will bring much glory and praise to God. Now, once again, I don't want to move on from this too quickly because I want you to consider what this says. I pray that your love will overflow more and more and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. How does that happen? Knowledge by the Word of God and understanding because we seek Him and He reveals Himself to us. So we start to understand what life is all about. For I want you to understand what really matters, so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. May you always be filled with the fruits of your salvation, the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ. The righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ, for this will bring much glory and praise to God. The righteous character produced in you by Jesus Christ. My question is, church, if Jesus spoke the words, it is finished, knowing that what was to come was that he was not going to be only one, but that he was going to become many by us believing and Him living in us and therefore living through us. A righteous character produced in our lives by Jesus Christ so that we can live how? Like He did. The words, it is finished, therefore, is phenomenal. And today, when I look around and I listen to people who call themselves Christian, I see Christian stress as much as the world and worldlings do, as if they are mere humans. I see Christians in stress and in fear, proclaiming the name of Jesus, but then also speaking out their fear and being fearful of everything. Whereas the Word of God says that the Spirit He gave us is not a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Love of power and of a sound mind. Sound mind seems like you understand. Love, because God is love. So love, power, and a sound mind. That's the spirit he gave us. So when you read Philippians 1, 9 to 11, he says, may you grow in your love so that your love will overflow more and more, that you will keep on growing in your knowledge that you will grow in your knowledge and understanding. For as you grow in your understanding, you will know what really matters. See, I think there's a lot of things that are going on today. But when we are naive about the spiritual, we forget that when the words were spoken, it is finished. It wasn't so that we will just live nice lives in this world. It was that we would live as church for the next generation to put Jesus on display so that the next generation will look at this and go, isn't he good? Isn't he? He's the king. He's the Lord of Lords. Romans 11 verse 36 says this, For from him all things originate, and through him all things live and exist, and to him are all things directed. To him be the glory and honor forever. Amen. Now, when he said it is finished, did he know 
that all things originated from him? <laughs> of course he did. When he said it is finished, did he know that he was going to send his Holy Spirit to come and live through us? Of course he did. So that all things may live and exist through him. And then to the one that all things are directed to. See, church, if we understand the words, it is finished. We understand that all things originate from him. All things live and exist for him. And all things are directed to him. To him be the glory and honor forever. Amen. It is finished. Therefore, to you and me means that God, as a loving, amazing God, gave his son, Jesus Christ, on the cross to speak the words, it is finished, meaning he reconciled everything back to himself. And in that way, you and I can choose the tree of life every single day and eat of the tree of life, meaning the word of God who was first, and through him and for him, everything that exists was created. And so therefore, when we read Romans eleven thirty six, all things originate from him, all things live and exist through him, and all things are directed to him. We as church understand that we have not only a responsibility, but we have a surrender to surrender that this world cannot understand. See, this world is all about control. We want to control our money. We want to control the power that we have because of money. See, that's called mammon. That spirit is a demon that stands directly opposed to God. It's not what we are supposed to be. Church, it's not who we were called to be. We were called to be a surrendered people, wholly surrendered unto Him because of the words, it is finished. He completed the work to reconcile us to himself. And therefore, you and I can have total peace, no matter what goes on around us in the world. People are in absolute havoc. When, because of all of the world news and everything happening around the world, and every second person is getting a new thing to stand for, or to bow for, or to whatever. And in the meantime... It just creates more gossip, more fight, more backstabbing. Hebrews 3 verse 14. For we have come to share in Christ. If indeed we hold to our original confidence firm to the end. For we have come to share in Christ. If indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. See church, this calls out of you and me. Something that the world does not. The world wants to call us into fear, into more debt, into more of self, into wanting more. Satan is the prince of this world, but Christ came to finish something we could not. And in finishing that, in stating it is finished, he paid a price no one could but him. And he reconciled everything to himself. And so today, as you are sitting, listening to this, I'm asking you, are there any things or anything that you stress about? Are you fearing something? When you look at the world economy and the world news, and are you fearful? Because God said he did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and a sound mind. Psalm 28, verse 7 says something that you and I should proclaim every single day. The Lord is my strength and my impenetrable shield. My heart trusts with unwavering confidence in Him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song I shall thank Him and praise Him. Why? Because He is closer than the air that I breathe. What is it that makes us miss it? At times, what is it? Well, this is such a beautiful message. It's finished. It's so easy to listen to and to hear. And it's actually so beautiful to understand and, and, and want it. But what makes us miss it? See, to miss the mark means to sin. 
And I want to read you something about sin and what sin is, just as an easy illustration. So listen to these words. Sin is when the glory of God is not honored, the holiness of God is not reverenced, the greatness of God is not admired, the power of God is not praised, the truth of God not sought, the wisdom of God not esteemed, the beauty of God not treasured, the goodness of God not savored, the faithfulness of God not trusted, the commandments of God not obeyed, the justice of God not respected, the wrath of God not feared, the grace of God not cherished, the presence of God not prized, and the person of God not loved. That is sin. So church, what makes us miss it? It's when the glory of God is not honored, the holiness of God not revered, the greatness of God not admired, and the power of God not praised on a daily basis, and the truth is not sought, and the wisdom of God is not esteemed, and the beauty of God not treasured, the goodness of God not savored, the faithfulness of God not trusted, the commandments of God, when they are obeyed, peace, joy, love, and the justice of God is respected, and the wrath of God is feared, and the grace of God is cherished, and the presence of God is prized. And when the person of God is loved, then church, then the next generation would want Christianity. Let's not miss it. Let us not be naive about the spiritual, for our battles not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and, and rulers who, by the way, has been defeated by the words, it is finished. So why? If it was finished, why? Why still stress? Why still fear? If he makes it clear, seek me and you will find me. Knock and it will be open to you. Draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How much time do you spend in the Word? How well do you know the Word? Today, most people know their games well, their applications well, their social media accounts well. But when it comes to the Word of God, how well do you know the Word of God? Get yourself a strong coach or a mentor or a discipler, get to know someone who has been a Christian for years and love the Word of God and ask them questions. Sit with them. Try and have a weekly or a bi-weekly coffee. You pay for it. You bless yourself. Invest into yourself by listening to someone else and ask them, how did you do it? Find discipleship. Find someone who can journey with you. And then get into the Word of God. That's the number one prize. Get into the Word of God. Start to read the Word of God. And then ask the Holy Spirit, before you read, Holy Spirit, you who were there when it all began, help me understand these words that you inspired. So church, as we go into this week, may you remind yourself time and time again that it is finished. I put up this specific painting that I received this week of a lamb and an ewe. That lamb just laying there, being protected. And it makes me think so much of the care and the love that God has for us. And if we remind ourselves that He has said that He will send us like lambs amongst wolves, that you and I, that we can have peace. Why? Because he's overcome the world. It's finished. So church, let us live by his words. And let us live by his empowerment. Let's pray together. Abba Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that the words, it is finished, will resonate through us as we journey with you through, during this week. Holy Spirit, come in and empower us to a new level, Lord. Raise us up. We thank you so much for scripture, for the word that 
brings Jesus Christ to us, that reveals Jesus Christ to us. I pray for every person who is listening to this in the name of Jesus, who is the name above all names. And I thank you, Lord, for the fact that you gave yourself and that now by your prize, we can draw near to you. For you live in us and you are closer than the air that we breathe. Amen. Church, I hope that you enjoy a beautiful week and that you meditate on these scriptures. Love you so much. Bye-bye.